do you have a hope that we'll be able to understand the the early spark that created our universe? Yeah. You know, that and uh, the deep interior of a black hole, I think are the, the biggest mysteries that we hope the melding of quantum mechanics and gravity will reveal, will illuminate. And, you know, what question could be more captivating than why is there something rather than nothing, right? Why is there a universe at all? And will the theories that we're developing take us to an answer to that? I don't know. Even if we truly knew what the Big Bang is, and that's a big question in its own right, one would still be left with the question, well, okay, so you've explained the process by which a tiny nugget of a universe, a tiny nugget of space-time can undergo some kind of growth to yield the world around us. But presumably in that explanation, you're going to involve mathematics and some ingredients like quantum fields or, or matter or energy or something. Where did that stuff come from? You know, can we get to that level of explanation? I don't know, but it is remarkable that if you ask what happened a millionth of a second after the Big Bang, it's not really that controversial any longer, right? Even though there's a lot of argument in the field and it's very heated right now, I should say, regarding what is the right theory of the Big Bang? What is the right theory of early universe cosmology? Where I mean early, much earlier than a millionth of a second. A lot of dissent, a lot of uh, uh, heated arguments about that. No but, pun intended. Yeah, right, exactly. Um, <laughs> but 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 you go like a millionth of a second after that, yeah. and and we're on pretty firm ground. Isn't that amazing? Right. <laughs> yeah. you know, to to understand, you know, what happened from that point forward. But to go back is 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 controversial. So there is this theory called inflationary cosmology, which I would say has been the dominant paradigm since uh, early 1980s. So what does that mean? Roughly 40 years now, it's been the dominant cosmological paradigm. And it makes use of a curious feature of Einstein's general theory of relativity, his theory of gravity, where Einstein shows us mathematically that gravity can not only be attractive, you know, the kind of gravity that we're used to, things pull together, but it can also be repulsive. And that fact is then leveraged by people like Alan Guth and, and Andre Linde, and at the time, Paul Steinhardt and Andreas Albrecht and others to say, okay, if we had a little nugget in the earlier universe, which was filled with the stuff that yields this repulsive gravity, well, that would have blown everything apart. It would mm -hmm. cause everything to swell. Beautiful explanation for what the bang in the big bang was. And then people mathematically analyze the consequences of this idea, and they make predictions for tiny temperature differences across the night sky that in principle could be measured. You send up balloons, you send up satellites with very refined thermometers, and they measured the temperature of the night sky, and the statistical distribution of the temperature differences agrees with the mathematical predictions. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. you just sort of have to stand in awe of, of, of this insight. So you think, aha, the theory has been established, but scientists are an incredibly skeptical bunch. And some scientists, including one of the people who helped develop the theory at the outset, Paul Steinhardt, mm -hmm comes along and says, well, yeah, it's done. This theory's done pretty well so far, but there are aspects of this theory that are making me lose confidence. For instance, this theory seems to suggest that there might be other universes. Like, how do you make sense of a theory that suggests there are other universes? Or, or there are others who come along and say, this theory seems to um, talk about length scales that are minuscule even by the so-called Planck length the sort of shortest length that we can imagine making sense of in a theory of quantum gravity. How do you make sense of that? And so on and so forth. They develop a list of, of things that they consider to be chinks in the inflationary cosmological theory's armor. And they develop other ideas which they claim yield the same predictions as inflationary cosmology for those temperature differences across space, but don't suffer from these problems. And then the inflationary cosmology folks say, no, 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 hang on. You know, your theory suffers from different problems. And so the arguments go. So it's a healthy debate. Talk about real debates in science. So when you ask what's up with the Big Bang, I don't know right now. 
Um, if you would have asked me five years ago, maybe even less than that, three or four years ago, I've said, look, inflationary cosmology has some issues, but the package of explanations it provides is so potent and the issues that beset it are seemingly solvable to me that I would imagine it's going to, in the end, win out. I would still say that today, but I wouldn't say it as loudly. I wouldn't say it as confidently. I think it's worth thinking about alternate ideas, and it could be the case that the paradigm at some point shifts. Does uh, dark matter and dark energy fit into the, sh the sh shifting of the, the explanations for those? Yeah, certainly. So so dark energy has, uh, in, in the inflationary theory, is kind of a big mystery. So dark energy is the observational realization in the last 20 years that not only is the universe expanding, it's expanding ever more quickly. Something is still pushing things outward. And the explanation is that there's like a residual version of the repulsive gravity from the early universe, but it's such a strange number. When you write that amount of dark energy using the relevant units in a theory of quantum gravity, it's a decimal point followed by like 120 zeros and then a one. Mm -hmm. We're not used to those kinds of numbers in physics. We're used to a half, one pi e squared to two. Mm -hmm. Those are the kinds of fundamental numbers that emerge in our explanations of the world. And we look at this bizarre number, decimal point, all these zeros and a one, we say, something's wrong there. Like, where would that number have come from? Now, there are people who suggest resolution to it, so it's not like we're totally in the dark on it, but those people like Paul Steinhardt, who have alternate cosmological theories, cyclic cosmologies, as they call it, claim that they have a more natural explanation of the dark energy, that it naturally feeds into a cyclical process that is their cosmological paradigm. So yeah, if the cosmology should change, it's conceivable our view of dark energy may change from deeply mysterious to deeply integrated into a different paradigm. That is possible.